What's up, everybody? It's me, Ronald Young Jr. Summer movie season is winding down. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be on the couch. We got two great episodes for you. Today, we're bringing you Prey. And next week, it'll be Only Murders in the Building. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. It means a lot to me to watch the numbers grow and to watch y'all continue to share and enjoy the episodes and bring feedback. I really enjoy all of that. Another way you could support the show is by becoming a contributor on Patreon. Patreon is a service that allows listeners like you to directly support our work here by contributing every month. And your money is well spent. It goes towards studio times. It pays our engineer. It helps with gas costs and movie tickets. It really makes the show a lot more self-sustaining. And I really appreciate that. But becoming a patron isn't just helping me. You get benefits. You'll get the extended episodes. There are two extended episodes on Patreon right now. There's the Nope extended episode with spoilers, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies extended episode with spoilers. We have lost episodes that were never aired, including Black Widow, which is going to come out soon. Uh, and you'll get leaving the theater swag. Uh, we'll have stickers and T-shirts and buttons and all kinds of things. And it's exclusive to Patreon subscribers. If you want to take advantage of all the things that Oh, It's Big Round Studios has to offer, you can start by becoming a Patreon subscriber today. All you have to do is go to patreon.com slash leaving the theater. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash leaving the theater. Also, the link is in our show notes and you can click on that right now. Thank you again so, so much. Thanks for listening. And with that, let's start the show. In 1987, Arnold Schwarzenegger demanded that everyone get to the chopper in the original action film Predator. In it, he leads an elite paramilitary rescue team on a mission to save hostages when they encounter a vicious alien entity. In the newest Predator installment, Prey, we go back over 200 years and follow Nehru, a young Comanche woman who finds herself the sole protector of her people from a much earlier form of the same vicious alien hunter. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm on the couch. This is Ronald, and I am on the couch after watching Prey. Prey, available on Hulu, directed by Dan Trachtenberg, written by Patrick Asen, starring Amanda Midthunder, Dakota Beavers, Michelle Thrush, Stormy Kip, Julian Black Antelope, Bennett Taylor, and Dane DeLiegro. All right, so most of you all already know that Prey is a prequel to the popular Predator series. I believe the original movie came out sometime in the 70s, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 1987, as a matter of fact, was the first one. Uh, I was three years old. <laughs> uh, so this is a legacy sequel of uh, Predator, and it's a prequel to the whole series. Now, let me tell you, Predator has had quite the journey. There has been Predator, the first one, Predator 2, Predators, <laughs> The Predator, and Now Prey. Outside of that, there's also been the Alien vs. Predator series. There's Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator Requiem. There was just a lot of, a lot of uh, films featuring uh, The Predator have been made. This one, a lot of people were excited about because they knew it was going to be a, they knew that this was going to be, and, and just let me, just to back this up, there's only two Alien vs. Predator films. There's Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Re Requiem. I can tell you that they both were garbage. Requiem was probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life, uh, <laughs> but uh, the original wasn't much better, if we're going to be honest. Um, but that being said, there's a lot of movies with this Predator creature in them, and for those people that don't know, 
predator is this creature. It looks like uh, like a very tall alien. It's very <laughs> muscular in nature with long dreadlocks, and it has a very intimidating mask on its face to cover what looks like mandible jaws that open out uh, hinged four different ways. So it's even scarier under the mask, but it's just as intimidating with the mask on. The mask on commands a bunch of technology that allows the uh, predator to have uh, to the predator to have uh, heat seeking vision or thermal, sorry, thermal vision. It allows it to have uh, uh, used that thermal vision in order to target its prey and hunt them. The predator, uh, we'll, we'll just call them the predator <laughs> aliens. They're obviously from another planet. They come to this planet to hunt because man is clever and kind of hunts back and it actually gives them a challenge. These are a species of folks that like, <laughs> that like challenging hunts. So there you go. The entire Predator series in a nutshell starts in 1987 with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's very popular. People like it. There's a lot of uh, action tropes that come from this. Predator, for those who have never seen it, is an action movie that still holds up to this day. You can watch it right now. It fits right in with everything else except for the uh, except maybe for the special effects. But the action of the movie is driven in a way that you're like, you'll watch it and be like, oh yeah, that's a classic action movie. Uh, and everything that comes after it is kind of derivative of it. Kind of like what I was saying about Top Gun. Gun, where it's just very classic action in that case. All right, so I've laid the groundwork. Let's talk about Prey. Prey is a prequel to all that, and we're introduced to a Comanche tribe that is in, uh, mm, they said it in the beginning, but it's in 1719. It's here in America, and it's in 1719. And it might have been in Canada. I'm not sure. The point is it's in North America. We know that. And it's in 1719. And uh, there's this Comanche tribe, and they're kind of hunting and going and uh, figuring out their, you know, their lives on the plains. And uh, Naru, who is the main character, uh, she is kind of running around uh, and trying to be a hunter like her brother, who is a hunter, and of course, because she is a woman, uh, she is kind of like frowned upon for hunting, even though they kind of tolerate her going to do this. And, you know, the plot moves on, and the entire plot of the movie is basically her essentially coming face to face with this bee entity that is destroying the animals, killing people, <laughs> killing members of her tribe. She's after it. And at some point, it becomes one on one between her and the predator. This is a very, very good movie. Uh, this, I was, to remind you, I'm sitting on my couch watching this. This is a Fox movie that honestly, five years ago would have came out in theaters. And I think it probably would have done well as a, as a little beginning of the summer blockbuster. Like I would not have felt bad having watched this in theaters. I would not have felt uh, like you know, I did so much, but I'm sitting here at home on my couch and riveted by the action sequences, which were fantastic. The hunting sequences were very, very tense. Tense. And I think raising the tension and keeping and making it plausible, even though I'm like, maybe I know what's going to happen. I don't know. Um, I believe that ultimately she is going to beat the Predator. I think most of the uh, most Predator movie movies always end with the human beating the Predator. So in terms of predictability, I don't know that it's I don't know that it's necessarily in this film, like there's a lot of things that are predictable, but I don't think they're they're executed so well that it didn't bother me. I'll put it like that. So knowing where the movie was going didn't make it any worse. But them being with this tribe and the way that they made this movie, they, you know, use the Comanche tribe. There's a Comanche dubbed version of this movie, which was released simultaneously with the movie. Uh, one of the turnoffs for me about the trailer was I remember when I saw it and I saw it was I saw it was native folks. I was like, oh, wow. Um, this is awesome. I get to, I was like, I can't, I can't wait to see this. But I saw that they were speaking English. And I remember having an issue with that being saying, like, I don't understand why they wouldn't have them speak uh, speak Comanche in this case. Just like kind of Apocalypto, which is what Mel Gibson did years ago, subtitled the whole thing. That is a fantastic movie given, I mean, granted, Mel Gibson is not a good person, but the movie is very good. Came out at a very different time in the early to mid aughts. Uh, and I expected this movie to kind of be similar, but they just went straight English and they dubbed it in Comanche, working with the Comanche people and the Comanche language team in order to basically make out a whole script, which dubs the entire movie in Comanche, which is, I mean, brilliant. I don't like dubbed movies. It's the only reason why I didn't watch it. But this one in English, 
perfectly fine. It kind of reminded me a lot of the hunt for Red October, where everyone's supposed to be speaking Russian, but they just, at one point, they just be like, ah, they're speaking Russian, but just so y'all know, it's English, you know, <laughs> which is, I can suspend my disbelief enough for that. And when the movie came on, the acting was done well enough. They used native people in the roles uh, that it, it just, I felt like I could suspend disbelief enough to watch this show. I mean, watch this movie from beginning to end. Uh, the action is good. The sequences are plausible. The character building is good for what it is. I mean, you know, there's not, th this movie doesn't do much. It's It, it kind of picks up, it starts, it picks up, and then the hunt is on after a while. You know, it starts like with a little bit of building action sequences but after a while it's just like we getting right to it so yeah i mean with that it being a straightforward movie good character development i was sitting on my couch watching it there's a lot of tense scenes great action sequences it's a four star movie for me sitting on the couch out of five stars <laughs> i give it four um I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were higher if I saw it in theaters, which is weird. Like, y'all know that normally for me works in reverse, but I'm fairly certain this would be like a 4.5 maybe star movie if I'm watching it in theaters, which I guess maybe I shouldn't penalize it for that, but I don't know. Just right now, I'm feeling a solid four stars uh, in my spirit. Um, it was a little too simple for me. I think they could have like, they probably could have done a little bit more but I mean, you know, with me, it's like you do more and then what do you risk? Risk it being worse or it not executing well. And they just did what they knew they could do. And I, I thought as a result, I ended up seeing a very solid movie. Uh, dads <laughs> who, who saw, okay, okay. Everybody who listens to this podcast, if you're, if you're of the 80s and you watch this movie growing up, your parents let you watch it, uh, Prey is a good way to introduce this entire series to your children if you're, you subject them to this type of violent movies, depending on what age. I'd say this is probably, I think it's a rated R movie, but I think it's realistically probably more like a PG-13. Um, there's some animal carnage and there's some human carnage as well. But And it's not terribly gory, but it is like, I'd say... Uh, <laughs> of gore, this is uh, this is not on the heavy side of gore. This is on the light side of gore. And it's more like, you know, them, like all the things that could be very, very gory, they turn the camera away from. But they keep it on things like, you know, somebody, if somebody gets their foot cut off, they turn the camera back so you can see the stub, but which is different from you actually seeing them slowly losing a foot, which I think y'all understand the difference there. So with all of that being said, Four of five stars uh, would definitely recommend. It's on Hulu right now. Most of you already have Hulu. Jump in and watch it. And with that, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Round Studios. Thomas Tyra of Bias Studios mixes the show. Thank you, Tom. Show art from Katie Helm. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. For more information about Prey, you can check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Oh It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oh It's Big Ron Studio shows by following us on Instagram at Oh It's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at Oh It's Big Ron Stew, S-T-E-W. Leaving the theater will be back soon, but until then, I'll be here on the couch. Earlier versus predator that blah 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 